Hey boys and girls, I'm Miss Christine and I'm so glad to have the chance to spend some time with you over the next few weeks. Um, I wanted to say a big hello to your parents and your leaders and anybody else that might be with you and that will be watching these videos. Um, we hope that you enjoy them and we hope that you share them with your friends, maybe your neighbors, other family members, um, and really just use these as kind of a way to share Jesus while we're not able to be together at church. Today I wanted to introduce you to the Hearts Alive Sunday School lesson that you probably didn't get a chance to hear yet. And and this week, we are actually talking all about um, Jesus being the light of the world. So you'll notice on my table over here, I have some different, um, different things that give off some light. So I have, this is a little, um, it's a phone charger, but it's also a night light. And then I have a candle that lights up and lights a dark room, maybe at nighttime. I took this from my daughter's room. This is her, her lamp that sits beside her bed so she can read books at night before she goes to bed. Here's a flashlight that we can use to shine some light into a dark space. And then lots of times, probably moms and dads, and some of you might have one of these too, and my cell phone has a flashlight on it as well nowadays. So these are all different kinds of lights that we have here. So when you hear the, the light of the world, when you hear that phrase, what do you think of? What comes to mind? Do you think of one of these lights over here on this table? Do you think of maybe a flashlight or a candle? What might you think of when you hear light of the world? Well, I hope some of you in your homes or in your cars, wherever you're listening to, I hope some of you are talking about Jesus and, and that he is the light of the world. So while all of these things on this table are helpful, they can't light up my neighborhood, they can't light up my, my town or the city that I live in, they can only light up a little tiny space, maybe in my house or a dark place I'm searching for something. So they can definitely not light up the whole wide world. So if we go to the very first chapter in the Bible, uh, the very first book in the very first chapter, who knows what that book might be? Genesis, you're right. So we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, and it says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So even at the very, very beginning, in all of creation, God saw a need for light. And so we can see light at the very beginning of the Bible in the Old Testament. And then we're gonna come over here to the New Testament in the Gospel of John, John 9, 5, that says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And that's actually our memory verse for this week. So you'll want to kind of be reminding yourself of that. Maybe you can put it on your refrigerator or a mirror at your house and remember that while Jesus is in the world, he is also the light of the world. So we saw in Genesis, we saw light. We saw in the New Testament, in John, we see more discussion about light. When God created the heavens and the earth, what do you think he created as as a, something to give off light. Did he create a flashlight? Or did he create a candle? No, he didn't. What did he create for light? He created the moon and the sun, right? And the sun primarily during the day to light the whole world. So God made the sun to light our planet by day and the moon and the stars, I forgot the stars, to light our earth and our world by night. And those are all of the natural, natural ways to light up the world. And as we saw in the New Testament, we also saw another light of the world. But this time, it wasn't a thing, right? It wasn't an object. It wasn't a part of um, the creation landscape, if you would. It was actually a person, right? Who was that person that's referred to as the light of the world? I kind of gave it away early on if you were listening. 
Yes, God sent his son Jesus to be the light of the world. And do you know what? In the Gospel of John, Jesus is called the light of the world, not just one time, not two times or three times, not even four times, but he is called the light of the world five different times. So what do you think it means when Jesus is said to be the light of the world? What is he reflecting? Do you think he's reflecting me? Is he reflecting you or your mom or your dad? Jesus is actually reflecting his father, God, when he is said to be the light of the world. He explains this in the scriptures to us. He points the way to heaven, and most of all, he offers us eternal life. Jesus is the only way to heaven, as we've talked about, and we're going to continue to talk about each Sunday in Sunday School and Kids Church. He is all of these things and so, so much more. So after Jesus rose from the dead, he spent six more weeks with his disciples, and then he ascended back to where? He went back to heaven. So did God's supernatural light of the world just disappear when that happened? Jesus is gone. He ascended back to heaven. Now where is the light of the world? Was it no longer here on earth? Think about it. Why don't you talk about it with whoever's next to you or maybe write in a journal your thoughts if you're by yourself. Did God's supernatural light of the world just vanish and disappear? That's a question we're going to spend some time answering this week. The correct answer might actually surprise you. In the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, 14, Jesus said something remarkable to his disciples. He told them that you are the light of the world. So God's supernatural light isn't missing. Instead, it's all over this planet. Millions of Christians live on this very nation of earth. And Christians didn't just live during the time of Jesus 2,000 years ago. Christians have lived all through centuries from then in every nation, bringing light of the light of God, light of the gospel of Jesus and the scriptures to the entire world. So now it's our turns. We are to be the light of the world. We are now it's our, our opportunity to reflect Jesus in God's son to others so that they can see him through us. Of course, it all started with Jesus, and that is to prove that he is truly God's son. And the supernatural light of the world, Jesus performed many, many miracles. And this is a great time, this time that we're living in where we're probably not in school and maybe we're not playing the sports we normally play or going to swim meets or dance practices, whatever your kind of extracurricular activities are, you're probably having a little break from them. But this is our time to still shine the light of the world, to still share Jesus with everybody that we come in contact with, because you know what? They need him now if they don't know him more than ever. And you get to share Christ's love with them. So think about that this week. Wherever you go, think about bringing your little flashlight that's your life in your heart and shining, shining Jesus on, on everybody else's life. So there's a song that I'm going to share on this post as well. And it's one you probably have heard before but it's called This Little Light of Mine. And it just reminds us that we have light within us that seeps out as we reflect Christ, and we can shine that light wherever we go. So that um, song is a song that you can sing this week. If you don't know it, you can probably memorize it because it's just kind of a catchy beat. Um, and then don't forget our memory verse from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 5. Um, and we'll be sharing that every single day that we do some videos. Um, so be looking for more videos real soon. We'll even have a, a video that we can watch together that talks about um, the light of the world this week and lots of other fun things. So we hope to see you back here real soon. And I can't wait to spend some more time talking about Jesus and shining his light with others.